Mold Nurse Specialist, Dr. Jackson Crawford. This is the second in my ranch porch series of uh, me just sitting out on the front porch and talking about things uh, either that I want to talk about or that uh, people tend to ask me about that are unrelated to Old Norse or that involve personal opinions so they don't really belong in the uh, main scheduled uh, series of videos that I do. So uh, one topic that I get asked about very, very much in a lot of different guises is Aosatru, to use the uh, modern Icelandic pronunciation of that word, which seems to be most common uh, among practitioners of the religion. Uh, for those that might not know, uh, Aosatru is belief in the Norse gods. It is uh, what you could call the Norse religion. Uh, tru in uh, Icelandic or in Old Norse means faith. And Alsa, in modern Icelandic, it is, would be pronounced Osa in Old Norse, is the genitive plural of the uh, name of the uh, most powerful group of Norse gods, the uh, Aesir in modern Icelandic, Asir in Old Norse. So it is literally just uh, faith in the Aesir, uh, faith in the Norse gods. And uh, this is a term that is favored by many practitioners of the Norse religion uh, today. Uh, others prefer other terms like uh, heathenism. Uh, another one that I see sometimes is foren sidr, which is uh, ancient way. In fact, none of these terms are preserved for the Old Norse religion in Old Norse. Uh, Alsathru is a uh, modern formulation, although Alsathru would be a good Old Norse word that would, it would work as one, but it's not preserved as such. Uh, in Old Norse, whenever the religion is referred to uh, as a thing, it is referred to as uh, heathenism, heathny, and someone who practices it, is, practices it is heathen. But keep in mind that it is only referred to as a body of belief when it is in some way contrasted with Christianity. In a pre-Christian context, there's actually no particular word or phrase that occurs to describe the religion probably because it was just part of people's normal daily practices in life. You don't need a name for that. You know, I don't, I don't have a name uh, to, to use what's probably a pretty good example for, um, you know, my particular practice of waking up at a particular time, sitting on the porch at a particular time, anything like that. And so they probably didn't have a name for the religion per se before they needed one, uh, or Christians needed one, to contrast it with this other religion. All right, so I get a lot of different questions about this. Uh, am I a practitioner of Alsathru? Uh, if I am not, why am I not? Uh, why don't I talk about it more? Uh, what do I think about some particular person's views on it or some particular person's practices about it? Uh, people particularly want me to comment on some other uh, YouTube personalities, um, which I'm not very inclined to do. Uh, so anyway... Uh, as I have stated before in several different videos, I do not practice Alsa through myself. Uh, and this surprises some people, which I think is interesting in and of itself. There's this notion that if you're interested in something, you must sort of be it. But I have never claimed to be, nor pretended to be, nor presented myself as a Viking, as someone who is Norse in identity or even in heritage, right? My last name is Crawford. Um, I have no known Scandinavian heritage. Uh, I won't say that I was never tempted by Alsathru, especially in late high school, early college, uh, when my linguistics interests were also uh, bringing me to read a lot of Old Norse literature, particularly Hovamol and other poems in the Poetic Edda. Uh, I found a lot of appeal in the cynical, uh, skeptical worldview of Hovamol, which I would say I still agree with a hundred percent. Um, and, and of course, in the sense of wonder and mystery that there is in this, uh, uh, body of mythology. Um, in one interview, I said that it was like, uh, we were just half seeing a ship or maybe some rocks through the North Sea mist. And we know there's something else out there. Who knows what heights of mountains are there, but we have so little, uh, preserved in the uh, poetic and prose edda and some sagas. We know there was so much more. And, and that very mystery, I think, is a big draw uh, to Asatru and to 
uh, the broader interest in Norse mythology. But uh, I do not have a, uh, a literal belief or faith uh, in uh, the Norse gods. That does not mean that I have any issue with people that do. Uh, I am not an evangelist by nature. Uh, I am very private about my religious and political beliefs. I have them. They are strong. Uh, but I don't feel the need to make other people agree with me about them. Uh, I feel like it's an unfortunate preoccupation of our times that, uh, and, and, you know, the first time I noticed this was back in, in what I'll call the old Facebook, back when Facebook was just uh, college students. Um, there was a little box that, that said political views and the little box that said religious views. And it was one of the first things people would see when they looked at your profile. And I thought, what a shame, really. Uh, when I first meet someone, political views or religious views are some of the last things that I want to come up. Uh, they don't influence uh, much about who my friends are. I mean, consider, <laughs> right? Consider, consider where I'm from. I'm from rural Colorado, Wyoming. Uh, and then I worked at goddamn Berkeley, right? <laughs> you know, I know people from every possible side of the spectrum of United States politics. Um, I have worked with those people. I am related to those people. Uh, you know, I have, I have such a broad range of friends and family in terms of political views, and uh, many of them would hate each other. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a link between people that would never tolerate one another. Uh, so, but because I've had to walk in both of those worlds, um, I just don't see a reason to judge people by their politics and religion uh, at face value. I mean, obviously there's extremes, uh, you know, very violent ideologies or, or things like that. But for 99% of people, I don't care what their politics and religion are. And I don't care for them to know what mine are. Anyway, so why am I not ousted through? Um, I could just as easily walk up to anyone on the street in the nearest little town over here and ask them why they're not Hindu, right? Or why they're not worshippers of the Greek gods. You know, for the most part, uh, I think people's religious beliefs are, are conditioned by either the culture they grew up in or by a sincere conversion. And uh, I was neither brought up as the through nor have I ever had a sincere conversion experience to it. Plain as that. Uh, I have no hostility toward the religion. I have uh, met, especially since making these videos, I've come into contact with a lot of people who do practice Asathrud. Uh, and, and even before that, um, starting in around 2006, I've been in contact with the uh, Asathrud of Yelayet. I shouldn't really say the Asathrud of Yelayet because the Yid there is the word the in Iceland. Uh, very kind people, uh, very knowledgeable people, um, and uh, I still have some, some friendly contacts there. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not out of any dislike of it, and obviously out of any disinterest in the material. One thing that I think is pretty funny is when people say that, well, you know, I'm not going to take information about Norse myth from you because uh, you're not ousted through, you don't take it seriously. I don't know what is taking it seriously. If getting a PhD in it, which indebts me for life and prevents me from having any sort of normal job, uh, is not taking it seriously. You know, that's, that's truly crazy. Uh, you know, I'm happy to read a history of Colorado by somebody who is from Zimbabwe, if it's well-researched. You know, it, someone doesn't have to be within your same uh, belief system to tell you about uh, the history of uh, the myths that uh, you celebrate in your religion. Somebody doesn't have to be from your state to tell you about the history of your state. Plain as that. So when people ask about my opinions about a particular practitioner or a particular practice or a particular group, I rarely really have them uh, because I don't spend a lot of time thinking about Alsa through. Uh, I spend time thinking about the medieval religion uh, and of course the preserved myths and the Edda and such, but there's so little about the religion. Uh, I have made a video about uh, some of the basic stuff that we do know. Obviously, we know that some sacrifices were practiced. Uh, we know about some holidays, but we barely know how this religion was truly practiced because 
our written sources are written down by Christians. And while Christians were often willing to transmit stories about the Norse gods by writing down poems from the Poetic Edda, or in the case of Snorri, uh, rewriting stories uh, in his own uh, cohesive form, you know, transmitting information about how to worship, uh, how to pray, uh, especially how to make sacrifices, very much against uh, the agenda of any Christian, uh, especially in the Middle Ages when it's, it's kind of a stretch for Christians to even uh, acknowledge that there's a legitimate interest in, in something like the religion of their forebears, or a legitimate reason to be interested in the religion of their forebears. And Iceland is one of the rare places where we really see that. Um, so, you know, somebody says, well, this group or this guru or whatever says that we should, you know, engage in, in this practice. Uh, let me make something up just so that I'm not naming names because I, I find it distasteful to, to try to start like a YouTube feud, right? Um, let me look around myself and see what I can pull up. I don't know. Um, here's a stupid one. Such and such a guru on YouTube says that we should always carry a piece of firewood with us. Okay. Such and such guru has decided that based on, um, you know, I can even make a, a, a shall I say, a scriptural source for this. In, in Havamal, there's a stanza about knowing how to um, measure firewood and bark for roofing and things like that. And somehow this guru has decided that this means that you should always have some firewood and maybe some roof bark with you. I don't know. You know, what do I think about this? Well, uh, I think that this is probably ahistorical. I doubt that anybody in pre-Christian Scandinavia was just carrying firewood with them everywhere. They probably spent a lot of time gathering firewood and chopping it, but uh, carrying it, not super likely. Uh, so what is my opinion? I don't think there's a historical basis to it, but what the hell am I supposed to say? Um, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to set myself up as a guru myself uh, and say, this is how you should practice the religion, because I know about 1% of how you should practice the religion, quote unquote. Uh, and I'm sure there was a lot of variation in how it was practiced between Denmark and Sweden and Norway and Iceland, and then even more uh, in how it was practiced by um, uh, believers in what you could call also through in England, Germany, the Netherlands, etc., before those countries were converted earlier to Christianity. Um, you know, so I can make some kind of very limited calls about whether I think it's plausible that something was practiced or not practiced, but, you know, I just don't have an interest in telling people how to practice their religion. If you feel, uh, you know, and, and this is not me trying to ridicule anyone, but if you feel, for instance, that carrying firewood with you at all times is uh, an expression of your closeness uh, to your god or gods, who am I to tell you that that's not an expression of your closeness uh, to your god or gods? People practice different things. People feel uh, truth in different things. They feel peace in different things. Um, and I don't care to dissuade them. Like I said, I'm not an evangelist by nature. So these are some of my opinions about Asatru and, um, and some of my lack of opinions about Asatru. But I hope this helps uh, to answer some people's questions about me and that religion. And for now, from beautiful Colorado, I'm going to wish you all the best.